My name is Claire Wheaton. For those of you who don't know, last summer I left Canada, my family, and my church to go on a Rotary Youth Exchange. I was sent to Germany, where I attended their equivalent of high school, which is called Gymnasium. I lived with three different host families and immersed myself in German culture. It was kind of like being a chameleon for a year, changing my colors and adapting to my surroundings. Now, before I get, I get into the nitty gritty of what I want to talk about today, which is my experience in Germany of the church, faith, and challenge out there in the world, I want to put a disclaimer out there. What I got to see from Germany and my experience there, though multifaceted, was mainly one-sided. My experience is that of a white, high, middle-class, educated, and privileged family. My experience is not the full story, but it is still a story, and I hope that it adds a little bit of color to your thoughts about the world. That being said, I would challenge you to look further than what I have to say today and seek challenge from other resources out there. So, Germany. First two questions that people seem to ask me uh, when they see me for the first time now that I'm back is one, how was your year? And two, are you happy to be back? My first thought in response is, how the hell am I supposed to answer your question in the one sentence answer you are looking for? How do I put everything that I saw, felt, and experienced this year into one sentence? But here's my attempt. My year was intense, mentally, physically, and spiritually. And to answer the second question, am I happy to be back? No. No, I am not happy to be back. In one of my reflections on my exchange, I wrote that changes in culture, space, and time enhance the juxtaposition of life, making transformation more visible. Since I have gotten back, I have been constantly confronted with parts of myself, parts of my life, and parts of the world that I don't like. And I can see them so much more clearly because they were absent for a year. That being said, it feels right to be back here, to be back in Canada, to be back with my family, and back here with Avon in whatever form Avon takes this year. This is where I am needed, and this is where I need to be. Now, often after those two questions, the conversation comes to an end. But today I'm excited because I get to go a little further. Today I get to answer some of the questions I wish people would be asking me and take the opportunity to think out loud a little bit. So let's start with the church. I grew up in the church. My mother was the pastor of our congregation, and I was a proud PK pastor's kid. And I have always been interested in the role that the church plays in society, and the role that the church could play in society. Which meant that I was curious, going to a new country, with a different and complex history of interactions between the church and state, and the church and society. What I found was an atmosphere in which the church and society interacted much more often, but it was based on tradition and ritual, 
that presence felt, or the presence of the church felt stale. For example, students in public school uh, attend religion class, and the only exception are for students who explicitly ask to be placed in another class. Uh, to celebrate my school's 175th birthday, they held a church service. And it's not that I attended a religious school. It was a publicly funded school, just like Stratford Central or Northwestern. It's simply so that at some point, the church and state made an agreement that, uh, that these religion classes would take place. And even though that agreement is no longer relevant and doesn't reflect society or reflect the church, is still in place. Other examples is the fact that on Christmas Eve, churches are packed beyond belief, even more so than here. And holidays such as Epiphany and the Ascension are civil holidays, which means, thankfully, that there are less days that you have to go to school within the year, but not many people actually understand the history behind these holidays. So, though from my perspective, religion is more present in Germany, people are not inherently more religious. Of my three host families, only one member of one family went to church on what I would call a semi-regular basis. Only one member of one family had any form of faith. This meant that my experience of church was mostly limited to Christmas and the occasional visit for special events. I did not have a church community and was not an active member of a church while I was there. Because of this, I experienced church and faith as two separate things over the course of the year. Yet, where church was sporadic, faith was constant. It was there on Sunday mornings as I walked to the bakery to pick up bread rolls for my host family so we could eat breakfast together. In Germany on Sunday, all stores are closed and it seems like the entire world sleeps in. There is a peacefulness and a sense of release after the week that is so present <laughs> when you walk through the streets at 8 a.m. and the world is completely still. Faith, faith was there as I walked through the Christmas markets, under thousands of fairy lights hung from the buildings in the city center, laughing with friends. Faith was there in the breathtaking simplicity of the German countryside, which I had hours on end to explore during the height of the corona crisis in Germany. So even though the church was not present in my life this past year, God was. One of the reasons that I decided to go on exchange was to take a step back. Going into the year, I was conscious that this was to be a year of rejuvenation. But, as is my tendency, I didn't stay in a place of recovery for very long. So by the time March came around, I was looking at three months jam-packed with activities before coming home. I was going to be traveling across Europe for two weeks, participating in one, uh, possibly two, Model UNs as the chair of a committee, which I was very excited about. I was going to be visiting friends, celebrating birthdays, there was even a christening in there somewhere, and a thousand other little events that I was very much looking forward to. Four, I was going to then hop on a plane come home, head off to a conference for uh, about half a week, start working for the rest of the summer, and then head off to university. And then everything got shut down. Over the course of a week, everything on my to-do list got canceled due to the outbreak of the coronavirus. It's funny how when we don't listen <laughs> God has a way of forcing us to pay attention. 
It's also funny that it took a worldwide pandemic, economic standstill, and a complete 180 on my expectations for me to finally understand that I needed to let myself breathe. And I did. And those last three months, though not what I expected, were exactly what I needed. I don't know if I have ever felt so at peace with the world, with myself, and with a presence that I can only describe as God. I spent hours and hours walking through the countryside, breathing in the air, and breathing in the feeling of being alive. So how does this all hang together? It boils down to this. The church does have a vital role in our faith journeys, but it is only one tool, one point of connection that God has created between us and him. I still believe in the importance of being surrounded by a community built on Jesus's love. However, I don't know what role I want the church as an institution to play in my life. This year taught me that the world can be your church and a field of cows can be your place of worship. I saw that faith comes in many forms and God is willing to stop the entire world so that we will just sit and listen for a minute.